All right, kiddos, we're back, and we're drawing more Lewis structures predicting shape, bond angle, and polarity. Today we're going to start with the ammonium ion, NH4+. Now this is interesting because it has this positive charge here. Do you remember what that means? Yeah, that means one valence electron has been lost. So from our total, we will subtract uh, one valence electron from our total number of valence that were allowed. It's a positive ion. That means one of the electrons was lost. So let's figure out how many electrons we're going to have here. We have one nitrogen and four hydrogens. So we'll go to the periodic table. Nitrogen is in group 15. It's right here, kiddo. So it has five valence. Hydrogen is in group one. So it has one valence. So five valence for my nitrogen, one valence for each hydrogen. We have five plus four. Now that gives us nine, but don't forget to subtract out one because it's a positive one ion. So we're allowed eight valence electrons in this Lewis structure. We'll put nitrogen in the center and on the four sides we'll put hydrogens and we'll put a bonding pair between each uh, the nitrogen and each hydrogen. And sure enough, I've used eight electrons. Now for an ion, we have not yet completed the Lewis structure. We need to put brackets around it and put the charge of the ion on the outside of the bracket. That alerts the reader, the person looking at that Lewis structure. It alerts them to the fact that we have, in this case, taken away one electron from the total, that we have an ion, not a molecule. All right, in determining its shape, let's see, we have our nitrogen in the middle. We have a hydrogen up top. We have one, if you remember, going back into the paper. This one going back into the paper and the fourth one coming out of the paper. Remember what we call that shape? That's right, that's called tetrahedral. And the bond angle. So the bond angle in a tetrahedron, it doesn't make a difference which hydrogen atoms I look at, I get 109.5 degrees exactly. So 109.5 is the bond angle. Now the polarity. This thing is an ion, so in reality, polarity really doesn't count when we talk about ions. If this were a molecule, you could see that all of the dipoles would cancel each other out, wouldn't they? All of them, using our spaceship analogy. So you might be tempted to call this nonpolar. However, for this class, we will call all ions polar. Once again, the term polar and nonpolar really doesn't fit with ions and their Lewis structures, but to make things simpler in this class, all ions, because it carries an, uh, an electric charge, either positive or negative, we will call them polar. All right, next up, this chart here on the next page of your notes I think is pretty helpful. Um, if you take a look, at, there's an example of a molecule that has a particular shape. And then it goes through the total number of pairs of electrons on the center atom, the total number of shared or bonding pairs on the center atom, and the total number of lone or non-bonding pairs. So this refers to the center atom in your Lewis structure. And then, after you know those things, it can help you with the shape and the bond angle. Here, let me give you a couple of examples for two that we've recently done. Um, NH4, the one that we just finished, the ammonium ion. If I were to draw it to the structure quickly, it would look like that. So if you look at the center atom, don't you see that there are four pairs around the center atom? Four are bonding, none are non-bonding. Don't worry about hybridization for right now. We can go right to the shape, tetrahedral, and the bond angle is exactly what we said, 109.5. Here, let's do another one. We did NH3 recently. So NH3 has this Lewis structure. This is the ammonia molecule. Now, we still have four pairs around the center atom. Three of them are bonding, one of them are non-bonding. So we know that that's trigonal pyramid, and the bond angle is a bit less than 109.5, a couple of degrees less, 107.3. Let's do one more. Uh, we've done the water molecule before. Oxygen's in the middle, and we're bonded to two hydrogens and two lone pairs on the oxygen. So there's still four pairs on the center atom. Two are bonding. Two are non-bonding. 
Yeah, we call that bent, don't we? And the bond angle we said is about 105 degrees. So this chart here will be helpful for you on your assignments. These last two are expanded octets, and we haven't talked about them yet. But when we do, I'll let you know. Okay, so don't worry about the expanded octets for right now. All right, let's practice some more. And this time we're going to run into something called multiple bonds and then resonance structures. So if I asked you to draw the Lewis structure for O2, there are two oxygen atoms, right? And let's see. Um, each oxygen atom has, let's take a look. Here's oxygen in group 16, six valence electrons. So we have two oxygen atoms times six valence electrons each. Doesn't that give me 12 valence electrons to work with? And so you say to yourself, okay, this is a piece of cake. I can draw this. We have oxygen bonded to oxygen. Then we'll give this oxygen on the right three more pairs to complete its octet. This oxygen on the left, three more pairs to complete its octet. And there you go. We're all done. Give me the next problem. Well, wait, let's check our work here, kiddos. Haven't we used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons, and we're only allowed 12? Yeah, this is not the correct Lewis structure. When you run into a situation like that, try having those atoms share two pairs of electrons instead of just one pair. We call that a double covalent bond. Now, when that happens, doesn't this oxygen only need two more pairs to complete its octet? And this oxygen only needs two more pairs to complete its octet. So I've used up two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, which is what we're allowed. Notice that each oxygen, for part of the time, has four pairs or eight electrons around it, doesn't it? Each one does. Now, the shape and polarity of this is going to be easy. Since there's only two atoms, we know the shape is linear. All molecules with two atoms have a linear shape. And since they both have the same electronegativity values, there will be no dipole, so this guy is nonpolar. All right, let's try another one. In fact, you're going to try it. Try the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Pause the video, try it yourself, then come back to the video and see how you did. All right, welcome back. We have a carbon and two oxygens. All right, let's find carbon on our periodic table. Here it is. It's in group 14, so there's four valence electrons. And oxygen, we already know, has six. So four valence for carbon, six valence for oxygen. That would be four plus 12. We're allowed 16 valence electrons. Okay, so let's put the carbon in the middle. We'll try a single bond between the carbon and each oxygen. Doesn't that carbon need two more pairs to complete its octet? And each oxygen needs three pairs to complete its octet. All right, it would be nice if that works, but let's count them up, see if we've used 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Nope, way too many. So you might want to try a double bond, like we did up above, one double and one single bond. Then this carbon just needs one more pair. This oxygen needs two more pairs to complete its octet. And this one would need three more pairs. So let's see how many we've used here. We've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Nope, only allowed 16. So that doesn't work. So let's try two double bonds. One to this oxygen, one to this oxygen. My carbon already has four pairs around it, doesn't it? It does not need to add. We do not need to add any more lone pairs on the carbon. But this oxygen needs two more pairs. And this oxygen needs two more pairs. Let's count them up, see how many we've used. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yep, that works. So we have that as our Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Is that what you got? Now look at the central atom. There's carbon. And we have one region of electron density here, one region of electron density here. There are no non-bonding pairs above or below to change that angle. So that angle, kiddos, is 180 degrees. We call this linear. Bond angle is 180. And we have a dipole pulling this way and one pulling this way. They're going to cancel each other out. So that is nonpolar. All right, let's try another one. Sulfur dioxide. 
sulfur dioxide is SO2, sulfur dioxide. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you come up with for a Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. Alrighty, welcome back. So we have sulfur 1, oxygen 2, Sulfur on the periodic table is right there. It's in group 16, so six valence electrons. Oxygen is here. It's also in group 16 with six valence electrons. So six valence for sulfur, six valence for oxygen. We have six plus 12. Looks like we're allowed 18 valence electrons. Now, I'm going to jump right to the chase here. Turns out that if I put one double bond and one single bond on the sulfur, things work out quite nicely. If I put a pair on the sulfur to complete its octet, two more pair on this oxygen to complete its octet, and three pair on this oxygen to complete its octet, we have a pretty decent Lewis structure. Let's count up our dots to make sure we've used 18. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Yeah, we've used 18, so I feel really, really good about that. Now, in reality, we're not finished. It turns out that a double bond between two atoms is always shorter than a single bond. I'm going to say that again. A double bond between two atoms is always shorter than a single bond. So what would you expect to see if you could see a sulfur dioxide molecule using this as your Lewis structure? Well, this would be shorter this double bond here, than this single bond. So you'd expect one oxygen to be closer than the other. Actual experiments show that the bonds are equal in length. They're the same distance. In fact, they're a little longer than a double bond and a little shorter than a single bond. So instead of having one single and one double, there are actually two one and a half bonds. That double bond is actually shared in both positions. So the question is, how do we show that in a Lewis structure? Well, let's go ahead and draw the Lewis structure we already have, showing the double bond on the oxygen to the right. And we have that. Now we know that that double bond is shared in both positions. So the way we show that is we draw an arrow pointing both ways, and we draw the Lewis structure again. But this time, we move the double bond over to the other oxygen and complete our octets. So this right here, both of these, would be the correct Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide. Showing the double bond in both positions is called showing resonance structures. Showing that that double bond and that double bond are actually shared in both positions. Now, to figure out the shape, notice the central atom has three regions of electron density around it. One, two, three. And when they're as far away from each other, kiddos, remember that angle is going to be 120 degrees. We call that trigonal planar. Now, we have a non-bonding pair up here, an oxygen here, and an oxygen there with my sulfur in the middle. So doesn't that obviously to you look bent? And we have a spaceship pulling this way and one pulling this way and nothing pulling up top. So this guy would move, so we'd call it polar. The actual bond angle is about 118 degrees because of that non-bonding pair taking up a bit more space than my bonding pairs. Okay, so once again, for something like SO2 where we have one double and one single bond, it, that double bond is actually shared in both positions. When we draw the Lewis structure, we draw what are called resonance structures to illustrate that. Alrighty, next up, the carbonate ion. Carbonate is CO3 2 negative. And that's the one we're going to begin with on our next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.